Hello, in this video we're going to fit a tow bar. I bought the tow bar online for a good price, so if you want to see where I bought mine, you might be able to get one for your car too. I'll leave a link in the description below. Tow ball and electrics. Tow bar. Bolts and brackets. And it comes with a tow ball cover. But I'm going to have to do something with this because the name of the tow bar is Anchor and the logo, unfortunately, it has this kind of compass on it and that reminds me of a letter W and that kind of, those two together comes up with a word and I don't really want that written on the back of my car so I'm going to probably scrape off the white marks on here That's just me, you can keep it if you want, you know? You might be happy to have that on your car I've had a quick look online and I've seen that I need to remove the bumper so these are 10 mil and there are some down here underneath just underneath the moss uh, and then there are some little pop out fasteners which can be removed with a flathead screwdriver if you don't have the correct tool and then that should be pretty much it I think but let's crack on and see So with these fasteners, if you get a screwdriver, one on each side, one over here and one 180 degrees away, I'm holding the camera right now, it makes it a bit difficult to do, and then you just pull, then they just pull out without any special tools. This video will probably get lots and lots of views because when I do things in a gash way like this, when I don't have a camera stand and the proper mic and everything, of the views and then when I do it properly nobody watches the video. Well, hidden in there there's a kind of latch holding this on. You can get a screwdriver in and lever it up and off she comes. You have to be careful with the cables in here. Disconnect those, you can see the plugs there. I'll just disconnect those cables and then take the bumper away. So there's one connector under here which um, disconnects all the parking sensors. So I'll take that off now. Okay, now I believe I have to take off these two crumple zone cover type affairs. So that's a 13mm spanner or ratchet. I've just had a look at the instructions for the tow bar and they do give some helpful tips. As you might imagine, I should have probably done that before starting, but there we are. Um, so it tells you what to do, it tells you where the fasteners are and things to remove. And then it tells you what to do next. My daughter's here to say hello. Hello? Yes, darling. <laughs> Daddy. What, darling? No, 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 because I see right there. Okay, but when I finish this, I've got to finish this first. Because I say fashion. I'm fitting a tow bar to the car so we can it's tow our, So we can tow our boat behind us. This is a camera, I'm doing a video. <laughs> yeah. She's on my back now. So after you remove the bumper, Two, slide B into the kerb near side chassis and secure to the side using J with N and H. So you've got a table there with all different sizes of fasteners uh, to work out which is which. And then B is this one we can see from the diagram. So B slides into. Here, like so. It is now secured into position on the side. You can see it's got a captive nut, well two captive nuts there, one on the side and one on the bottom. And you just reach your hand up here and put that in the right place and engage it and then tighten it. Now when I say tighten it I'm going to leave it extremely loose and the reason I'm leaving everything very loose is that I want everything to go together nice and easily and if I start tightening things now that will never happen. So leave everything nice and loose so you've got lots of movement and play in every different component 
while you're putting it together and you'll make your life a lot easier. So I shall continue now to add fasteners as per the instructions. One of the mounting holes here is slightly covered by this plastic trim, the wheel arch trim. So I'm just going to cut the corner off that there and there's a lot of different ways you could do that. Hacksaw, hot knife, decent pair of scissors might do it. I've got some tin snips so I'll just cut off that corner and give myself some access. Okay that took about five seconds and now I can get the bolt through and then just very loosely put on the plain washer. Plucking washer and nut. As per before, nice and loose with lots of play for me to work with. I've run into a slight problem here. As you can see on the diagram, D, it's a certain width and then it gets thinner and it's got a little sticky thing sticking out of this end. But the D that I've got is not like that. It is uh, the same width all the way back, which is a problem because here on this car we have uh, a screw section for a towing eye to be put in which is welded into this kind of box section here. Um, so that's not going to come out and if I put this in where it's supposed to go it gets in the way and it stops me from lining the holes up correctly. So I'm going to have to modify this and turn it into this. So I'm just going to take an angle grinder and cut this down so it's nice, nice and thin. It only needs to be strong enough to uh, allow me to position it and then I'll kind of make it that shape and I'll show you when it's done and then that will allow me to get it in properly. Okay, this now should fit in there without any bother. Okay, I'm back from a break. Said hello to my neighbour mate and just had a pizza and garlic bread. Very nice. Well that was all very easy apart from this last step. Um, I did say I was going to do the captive nut first but I didn't. I did this one first which was then getting him away. So part of that was my own silly fault. But yeah you don't have much purchase on this when you're trying to wiggle this into position right, which is right at the back. You can't really see what you're doing very well. A light helps. Uh, I know that's not exactly a revelation but I was trying to do it without a light first. And then I did the light which helped and then also to help me um, get it into position I used one of the bolts from the kit as a kind of pivot point um, you know by putting it on there I was able to push down and this and that would lift up the far end and that helped me to position it and it's now engaged so I shall remove that bolt and then I can start to torque up the knots. Now that I've removed that bolt you've got a better view of what I was talking about there the captive knot is at the rear end there you can't really get to it very easily so using the uh, the bolt as a lever to be able to push down on this end to lift up the far end made it much easier to get that in position and engaged okay it is a quarter to ten at night it's a little bit of daylight the tow bar is all fitted and the tow ball and the electrics are fitted externally quick shot before the bumper goes back on I've put the two covers on one over there and one over here I've routed the cable, just followed the original wiring for the vehicle and I've made an extra hole in the grommet there. It's kind of an interference fit, you know, I had to pull the cable quite hard to get it through the small hole that I made, so uh, I'm not worried about water getting in there. And that arrives in a convenient place inside the car. So I'm now ready to put the, uh, connect the cables again and then refit the bumper, which of course is the reverse of the removal. 
By the way, I found an easy solution to the name problem. Get a flat blade screwdriver. Then you can rub out anything that you don't want to be on there. Okay, we're on part two of the video now. A little bit of time has passed since the first section and I've been waiting for the rain to stop. It has now stopped and we have glorious sunshine so I can crack on and do the wiring now. Putting everything back together was really easy. The bumper went back on fine. The only tiny little issue I had was just on here. Putting this trim back on was a little bit sketchy. You know, in the sense that it just took a few more minutes of time. So that was the only bit that wasn't really straightforward. So yeah, so far, nice easy job. We'll see how the wiring goes. This is a relatively old car. It's not CAN bus, which makes the, uh, the electrics really quite simple. It's just analog, you know, just, you're just picking up 12 volt supplies and supplying uh, incandescent lamps with power. So it shouldn't be too difficult. around here at the back and lo and behold just under here tucked in hidden away is a spare connector so I haven't really investigated it yet but I believe this is going to be giving me everything that I require I've just had a look at the wiring kit which is supplied with the tow bar and it comes with eight scotch lock connectors uh, one self tapping screw if you need one for the earth and it's got an audible relay as well. This didn't come labelled up, I've just done that now. I've been online and got two wiring diagrams. The first one is this one, which is the wiring for a seven pin plug. So you can pause the video here if you need this. And the other wiring diagram is for the audible relay. And then as I was labelling this up, this just seemed like a good idea to make myself a little cheat sheet for my watch. So I don't have to have a piece of paper blown around in the wind and I don't have to come back and refer back to the computer. I've got a little bit of white tape on my watch and it's got the pin number, the colour and the function written down. So I know exactly what's what without having to try and remember anything. I'm starting to identify the, the wiring inside the vehicle now. So I've pulled out some more cable here. This, uh, this connector was around the corner there. I've just pulled it through. This is kind of like very strong, very good quality electrical tape that they put on the looms here. So you can just kind of peel it back and give yourself a little bit more cable. I then stripped off the, the tape from this section so I've got access to the cables themselves. And now I'm just identifying them. So to do that, I've started off with the right hand indicator and all I've done is I've wedged the multimeter, one of the contacts here, it doesn't matter positive or negative, um, on the earth. So that's just kind of wedged in there with the, the earth there on the vehicle. And then I've just got the other side of the multimeter and I've jammed it into the back of the connector um, where the crimped end is. And that gives you an electrical connection at this side. And then with the right hand indicator turned on, I've got this. So it's fluctuating between zero volts and 12 volts. So this is the right hand indicator, which on this vehicle is the black and green conductor here. I was going to label this up right hand indicator but there's not much point because I've already labelled the audible relay right hand indicator so if I just connect this straight away then I don't have to waste time on the label. So I just thought I'd show you this, the scotch lock connectors, if you've never seen these before they're very simple. Soldering is more reliable so if you want to spend the time to do that then uh, you're more than welcome to. But this is a very quick and simple easy method of connecting conductors so basically you pass through the kind of donor cable if you like to call it that through here and then you get the cable that you wish to connect and you just place that in there push it right in past you so you're going past this little metal section to the back there and then what happens is inside here you've got this little metal majobber which as you push it down these these kind of slots cut through the insulation of the cable and touch the copper beneath so you don't need to strip the cables back this uh, automatically does that so I'll just do this for you now 
stick through the donor conductor. Double check you've got the right wire, which I didn't have there. It's a right hand indicator. Shove that in all the way to the back. Just double check, yeah, the length is good. And then, a pair of pliers. Just squeeze that down. Now that's connected the cables and you just pop it closed and that's it done. So a nice, quick, simple way of connecting cables and all you need is a pair of pliers. I'm gonna strip back the end of the cable here to expose the conductors inside the cable which goes to the plug at the back of the vehicle. Uh, how much do I need? I'll probably take about, about four inches. And there are lots of different ways of doing this. As long as you're very careful, you can do it this way. If you just very gently score the insulation without you're not trying to cut through it you're just trying to score it so you're telling it where to break and then if you fold it over very tight and you kind of do that in several different places the same again you don't want to cut too deep because if you do you'll go into the insulation of the the wires within the cable you don't want to do that so be gentle like that all the way round and then you just bend it over and it's kind of like a stress razor you tell it where to break and it knows where to break when you start giving it some welly there we go and zero nicks at all you double check when you've done this, make sure you haven't nipped the cables. No nicks at all there, whatsoever. So I know it looks ugly and not very professional, but it actually works as long as you're careful. So now I can refer to my watch diagram and I see that the right hand indicator is the green cable. I'm just testing the audible relay here. So I've just got the two earths, the two white cables and kind of spun them together and hung them off an earthing point on the car. I've plugged in a trailer lighting board there, so this is gonna have a load on it now. And if I just put the camera there and get the greens, touch them together. There we go, the audible relay is working, so I'll just to connect these two cables together now and then um, I can look at a more secure permanent location for the earth so that it can be fixed properly to the vehicle and then I'll just go through in this same process with the left hand indicator and then I'll be connecting up the rest of the cables as per the uh, cheat sheet on my watch. I don't have enough scotch lock connectors to do this, I don't have any solder sleeves lying around if you, if you don't know what they are look them up, they're fantastic for situations like this. Um, so I'm just going to use an old school way of connecting these together which is just to twist them together. I've got probably about an inch there of, of copper. I'm going to twist them both together like that and then just fold it over to one side and I'll tape this with electrical insulation tape. That will be a nice strong joint even though it doesn't look particularly neat it will work. I've done both the indicators now and if you come in the vehicle and indicate you get the beep from the back and you also get the little trailer symbol on the dashboard there. I don't know if you can see that actually. There you go, you get the trailer symbol on the dashboard. No warning lights so this is working beautifully. I'm now trying to establish which is the fog light. To do that, I've just been turning the fog lights on and off, and again, round at the back with my multimeter. Uh, I'm seeing the voltage on this connector, so it is the red and blue cable here, which I need to connect to the fog light, which is the blue cable on here. I'm just working out which cable is the brake light, so with the help of a car jack, a first aid kit, and the multimeter, 
I can see that it is this cable which is the red and white. So I'll just get my Scotch Lock connector, red and white, put that there, get my red connector, double check that on my cheat sheet. Red is brake, yes. Push that fully home. There we go. And the brake is working on one side of the trailer lighting board but not on the other side but that will be oh there we go that will be that <laughs> that was an easy fix okay I'm chasing tail lights here just to uh, explain what's going on I expected the tail lights to be on this connector they weren't unfortunately so I had to go looking for them so I'll just go through the steps that I took um, obviously I'm doing the same thing I'm turning the lights on and off inside the vehicle and then looking for voltage here and I saw that the tail light was being fed by this which on the other side is on pin number two of the plug which is a red uh, conductor with a little blue fleck in it so I've then followed this loop down to a convenient spot um, where we're working and fumbled through in here because I knew it would be in here somewhere and I have found the left hand side tail light there so it's this one the red and the blue just inside that bundle there I was pretty sure it was that one because of the location of it and having followed it down from the light but just to confirm it I stuck my probe with the multimeter in through the insulation to the cable underneath to the copper and saw voltage and tested it on and off to confirm that this is ours so now I can just put a scotch lock connector on here where I've done this little mark on the on the insulation so this is going to be covered by the scotch lock I'm just going through the same process over on that right hand side of the vehicle however I haven't removed the light because I just looked down here and saw the loom which was going up to the light which is this one and then I guessed that it was going to be this same colour code so red with a fleck of blue and I did the same again so just got my probe dug in through the insulation there's a couple of different choices here I can go and get a section of cable and attach one into this and the other end over there or I can just make an incision in the insulation of this and pull over this brown cable over to that side I think that's what I'm going to do and then I'll tidy up the cables test everything make sure everything's all hunky-dory and then that should be us done and when I say make an incision in the insulation it's the same as before I'm not cutting through the insulation because that would damage the insulation of the conductors all I'm doing is just telling it where to break a stress razor tiny little score which isn't going through anything and then if I get the brown and pull there we go it just pulls through exactly where I wanted it to and there are no nicks on the insulation of any of the conductors okay that's the job done I've tested everything with the lighting board everything's working perfectly there are no visible modifications to the car apart from the tow bar itself of course um, but you know I didn't have to make any bumper cuts and in the boot area even if you lift out the boot cover you can't tell you can't see any differences in wiring or anything you have to really go dig in to find the work that I've been doing and the cable which runs across the back of the vehicle here is duct taped inside across the chassis um, but it's hidden by this plastic cover so you really do have to go dig in to find to see any of the work that I've done today. The total cost for this job was £148 which is about $170 something like that and the vendor that sells these tow bars so if you've got this car then you might choose the same model tow bar if you wish or they have all different tow bars for different models and different options and things like that so check out the link in the description go and have a look and see if they've got a good deal for you and your car I can't wait to get using this now I've got a, uh, a little boat a mirror dinghy which I'm going to be towing about with this which is going to be really good fun and I've got some other ideas for I'd like to make a little teardrop trailer on the mirror dinghy trailer for example and if I do I'll make a video about that as well so I hope you found this video helpful if you did give it a comment or a like or something like that just to show a little bit of appreciation and 
encouraged me to make more videos and that's it for this one so I'll see you in the next video until then never bow down to tyranny and love life <laughs>